In the vast tapestry of human civilization, few inventions have had as profound an impact as the Indian number system. Its ingenious place value notation and base 10 representation revolutionized the way we perceive and manipulate numbers, laying the foundation for countless advancements in mathematics, science, and technology. Welcome to this fascinating exploration of the ingenious Indian number system, a revolutionary development that profoundly impacted mathematics and the way we represent numbers today. Let's begin with a quote from the renowned French mathematician, Pierre Simon Laplace, which perfectly encapsulates the significance of this invention. The ingenious method of expressing every possible number using a set of ten symbols, each symbol having a place value and an absolute value, emerged in India. The idea seems so simple nowadays that its significance and profound importance is no longer appreciated. Its simplicity lies in the way it facilitated calculation and placed arithmetic foremost amongst useful inventions. The importance of this invention is more readily appreciated when one considers that it was beyond the two greatest men of antiquity, Archimedes and Apollonius. Indeed, the Indian number system, with its place value notation and base 10 representation, was a groundbreaking achievement that revolutionized arithmetic and paved the way for advanced mathematical concepts and calculations. In this video, we will delve into two distinct aspects of the Indian number system. First, we'll trace the evolution of the numerals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, examining how they transformed into the familiar symbols we recognize today. It's important to note that there is no universal standard for writing these numerals, as different fonts and handwritten styles can result in variations, some of which may be challenging to recognize. Secondly, we'll explore the place value system itself, a concept that, as Laplace observed, seems deceptively simple, yet holds profound significance. We'll also highlight the fact that Indian number systems were almost exclusively based on a base 10 system, in contrast to the Babylonian base 60 systems. While the symbols we use today took on forms close to their present appearance in Europe during the 15th century, thanks to the advent of printing and the subsequent standardization of symbols, we must not forget that many countries still use symbols quite different from zero, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Unless one is familiar with these symbols, they can be as unrecognizable as the Greek alphabet to an untrained eye. One of our most valuable sources of information about Indian numerals comes from Al Biruni, an esteemed scholar who visited India during the 1020s. Before his visits, Al Biruni was already familiar with Indian astronomy and mathematics through Arabic translations of Sanskrit texts. During his time in India, he conducted a detailed study of Hindu philosophy, as well as various branches of Indian science and mathematics. Al-Biruni's 27 works on India and its sciences, particularly his account of Indian astronomy and mathematics, provide invaluable insights into the history of Indian science. In a famous book written around 1030, Al-Biruni made the following observation about Indian numerals. Whilst we use letters for calculation according to their numerical value, the Indians do not use letters at all for arithmetic. And just as the shape of the letters that they use for writing is different in different regions of their country, so the numerical symbols vary. Historians trace the origins of the various numeral symbols that Al-Biruni encountered back to the Brahmi numerals, which emerged around the middle of the 3rd century BC. However, the Brahmi numerals were not just symbols for the numbers between 1 and 9. The situation was far more complex, as it was not a place value system. There were symbols for many more numbers, including 10, 100, 1000, as well as 20, 30, 40, and so on, up to 90, and even 200, 300, 400, and up to 900. Interestingly, the Brahmi numerals did not have separate symbols for 2 and 3. These numbers were constructed from the symbol for 1. The Brahmi numerals have been found in inscriptions in caves and on coins in regions near Pune, Bombay, and Uttar Pradesh, dating back to a period spanning from the 3rd century BC to the 4th century AD. As we move forward in time, the Brahmi numerals evolved into various forms, each with its unique style. One notable development was the Gupta numerals, which emerged during the Gupta dynasty's rule over the Magadha state in northeastern India spanning from the early 4th century AD to the late 6th century AD. The Gupta numerals, 
spread across vast territories by the expanding Gupta Empire, evolved from the Brahmi numerals. The Gupta numerals, in turn, gave rise to the Nagari numerals, also known as the Devanagari numerals, which began to take shape around the 7th century AD and continued to develop from the 11th century onward. Aptly named the Writing of the Gods, the Nagari numerals were considered the most beautiful of all the forms that evolved from the Brahmi numerals. Al-Biruni himself praised them, stating, What we, the Arabs, use for numerals is a selection of the best and most regular figures in India. Now let's shift our focus to the second aspect of the Indian number system, the place value system, a concept that, as Laplace noted, seems so simple yet holds profound importance. Although our modern place value system is a direct descendant of the Indian system, it's crucial to recognize that the Indians were not the first to develop such a system. The Babylonians had a place value system as early as the 19th century BC, but their systems were based on base 60 rather than base 10. The Indians were the pioneers in developing a base 10 positional system, an achievement that came remarkably late considering the existence of the Babylonian system. The oldest dated Indian document containing a number written in the place value form we use today is a legal document dated 346 in the Chedi calendar, which translates to 594 AD in our calendar. This document is a donation charter of Dada III of Sankata in the Parukachcha region. However, some historians claim that the date has been added as a later forgery, although there seems to be no conceivable reason to forge the date on this particular document. Despite the doubts surrounding this specific document, we can be reasonably confident that a place value system was in use in India by the end of the 6th century AD, thanks to several other dated charters and inscriptions that employ this notation. These include a donation charter of Diniki dated 794 in the Vikrama calendar, which translates to 737 AD in our calendar, an inscription of Devendravarman dated 675 in the Shaka calendar, corresponding to 753 AD. A donation charter of Danidurga dated 659 in the Shaka Kalendar, corresponding to 737 AD. A donation charter of Shankaragana dated 705 in the Shaka Kalendar, corresponding to 793 AD. A donation charter of Nagbada dated 872 in the Vikram Kalendar, corresponding to 815 AD. An inscription of Bauka dated 894 in the Vikrama Kalendar, corresponding to 837 AD. While some historians claim that these documents are forgeries, it's possible that some or all of them may be genuine. The first undisputed inscription that is both dated and employs the place value notation is the inscription at Gwalior, dated 933 in the Vikrama calendar, which translates to 8 and 76 AD in our calendar. There is also indirect evidence suggesting that the Indians developed a positional number system as early as the 1st century AD. This evidence comes from inscriptions found in countries that were assimilating Indian culture, even though the inscriptions themselves were not located in India. Another source of evidence is the Bakshali manuscript, which contains numbers written in place value notation. Although the dating of this manuscript is a topic of ongoing debate, the question that naturally arises is, why did the Indians develop such an ingenious number system when other ancient civilizations, such as the Greeks, did not? Several theories have been proposed to explain this phenomenon. One theory suggests that the Babylonian base 60 place value system was transmitted to the Indians via the Greeks. Greek astronomers used the Babylonian base 60 place value system with a symbol similar to our modern zero. According to this theory, these ideas were transmitted to the Indians, who then combined them with their own base 10 number systems, which had existed in India for a very long time. Another hypothesis proposes that the idea for place value in Indian number systems came from the Chinese. Proponents of this view, such as Lei Yong Lam, argue that the Chinese had pseudo-positional number rods, which could have served as the basis for the Indian positional system. Lam contends that the Chinese system already contained the three essential features of our modern numeral notation system. I, nine signs and the concept of zero, prime I, a place value system, and EI, a decimal base. A third hypothesis, put forward by Joseph in his work, suggests that the place value concept in Indian number systems was an entirely indigenous development. Joseph proposes an interesting theory as to why the Indians might have been motivated to develop such a system. He attributes it to the Indian fascination with large numbers, 
an idea supported by other historians like Freudenthal. To illustrate this fascination, we can turn to the Lalita Vistara, an account of the life of Gautama Buddha. Although it's difficult to date this work precisely due to its continuous development over a long period, dating it to around the 1st or 2nd century AD is reasonable. In the Lalita Vistara, when Gautama is a young man, he is examined on mathematics and asked to name all the numerical ranks beyond a koti, which is 10 or 7. Gautama proceeds to list the powers of 10 up to 10 on 53. Taking this as a first level, he then carries on to a second level and eventually reaches 10 mol 421. Gautama's examiner exclaims, You, not I, are the master mathematician. Stories like this, and many others, convince Joseph that the Indians' fascination with large numbers must have driven them to invent a system in which such numbers could be easily expressed, namely a place-valued notation. He writes, the early use of such large numbers eventually led to the adoption of a series of names for successive powers of ten. The importance of these number names cannot be exaggerated. The word numeral system, later replaced by an alphabetic notation, was the logical outcome of proceeding by multiples of ten. The decimal place value system developed when a decimal scale came to be associated with the value of the places of the numbers arranged left to right or right to left. And this was precisely what happened in India. However, the same story in the Lalita Vistara convinces Kaplan that the Indians' ideas of numbers came from the Greeks, as he sees it as an Indian version of Archimedes' sand reckoner. Ultimately, while the precise origin of the place value system remains a subject of debate, what is clear is that the Indians' contribution, however it arose, was transmitted to the Arabs and later to Europe where it had a profound impact on the development of mathematics, as Laplace so eloquently stated. As we reflect on the remarkable journey of the Indian number system, from the ancient Brahmi numerals to the place-value notation that revolutionized arithmetic, we are reminded of the profound impact this ingenious invention has had on the world of mathematics and beyond. The ability to represent and manipulate large numbers with ease facilitated by the Indian place value system opened up new horizons in mathematics and scientific exploration. It enabled calculations and computations that were previously unimaginable, paving the way for groundbreaking discoveries and advancements in fields such as astronomy, physics, and engineering. Moreover, the Indian number system's base 10 representation aligned perfectly with the human experience of counting using our 10 fingers making it an intuitive and practical system for everyday use. This simplicity and accessibility contributed to its widespread adoption and enduring legacy. As the Indian numerals and place value notations spread across the globe, they were adopted and adapted by various cultures and civilizations. The Arabs played a crucial role in transmitting this knowledge to Europe, where it ultimately transformed the way mathematics was studied and practiced. Today, the Indian number system is a universal language transcending cultural and geographic boundaries. Its symbols and concepts are woven into the fabric of modern society, enabling communication, calculation, and the exchange of ideas on a global scale. But the impact of the Indian number system extends far beyond the realm of mathematics. Its influence can be seen in countless fields, from finance and economics to computer science and digital technology. The binary system, which underpins modern computing, is built upon the principles of place-value notation and base representation, tracing its roots back to the ingenious Indian invention. As we continue to push the boundaries of human knowledge and exploration, the Indian number system remains a foundational pillar upon which our understanding of the universe is built. Its elegance, simplicity, and profound significance continue to inspire generations of mathematicians, scientists, and thinkers, reminding us of the incredible ingenuity and intellectual curiosity of ancient civilizations. In the words of Laplace, the importance of this invention is more readily appreciated when one considers that it was beyond the two greatest men of antiquity, Archimedes and Apollonius. Indeed, the Indian number system stands as a testament to the remarkable achievements of human intellect and the enduring power of ideas that transcend time and space. So, as we conclude this journey through the history and significance of the Indian number system, let us embrace its enduring legacy and continue to be inspired by the ingenuity of those who came before us, for it is upon their shoulders that we stand.
reaching for ever greater heights of knowledge and understanding. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of one of humanity's most profound and influential inventions. Until next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and never stop marveling at the wonders of mathematics and the incredible minds that have shaped our world.